Good morning, and welcome to morning prayer on this most holy day, Monday, Thursday. I'm Mark Stevenson, parish deacon at Church of the Ascension. And I am Charity Warrenberger. Let's take a moment to silence our hearts before the Lord. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. Dearly beloved, the scriptures teach us to acknowledge our many sins and offenses, not concealing them from our heavenly Father, but confessing them with humble and obedient hearts, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. We ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before Almighty God, but especially when we come together in his presence to give thanks for the great benefits we have received at his hands, to declare his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things which are necessary for our life and our salvation. Therefore, draw near with me to the throne of heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. We have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises, declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O oh most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Together, let's say the Vanity. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness when your fathers tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways of whom I swore in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. O oh, come, let us adore him. 
Let us read the psalm appointed for today. Psalm 41. And let us read it responsively. Blessed is the one who considers the poor and needy. The Lord shall deliver him in the time of trouble. The Lord preserves him and keeps him alive, that he may be blessed upon earth. And delivers him not over to the will of his enemies. The Lord comforts him when he lies sick upon his bed. And restores him from his bed of sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. My enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if anyone comes to see me, he speaks empty words. His heart conceives falsehood within him, and when he goes forth, he tells it. All my enemies whisper together against me. Even against me are they devising evil. A deadly thing has taken hold of him. And now that he lies down, he will rise up no more. Indeed, even my own familiar friend, whom I trusted, who also ate of my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. Be merciful to me, O Lord. Raise me up again, and I shall repay them. By this I know you favor me. That my enemy does not triumph over me. And when I am in health, you uphold me and shall set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. World without end, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. A reading from St. Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians, beginning with the 10th chapter, the first verse. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things took place as examples for us, that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble, as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction, on whom the end of ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed, lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from adultery. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of one bread. Consider the people of Israel. Are not those who eat the sacrifices participants in the altar? What do I imply then? that food offered to idols is anything, or that an idol is anything? No, I imply that what pagan sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be particip- in particip- participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord 
and the table of demons. Shall we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together we'll say the Benedictus. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, beginning with the 13th chapter and 21st verse. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at the table at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Israelkot. Then, after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now no one at the table knew why he had said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people who know that you are, will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The power of words. We, we experience that power every day. Old words, new words that come and go and only to return again. The current crisis added new words to our daily vocabulary. COVID-19, personal protective equipment. And who would have ever thought that the word pandemic would return and wield so much power? Words can certainly frighten, but just as we heard, they can also bring much needed comfort. Because the words we just heard from the Gospel of John are the words of Jesus. 
Jesus is the master wordsmith. Because Jesus is the word, the word made flesh. He speaks the perfect word at the perfect time. Nowhere is this better illustrated than in this morning's reading from the Gospel of John. Today is the beginning of the end of our Lenten journey. This Monday, Thursday has new poignancy and weight. As we begin the day, sheltered in place, self-quarantined, perhaps even hospitalized. But Jesus has the perfect word for us this morning, love. A cliche, you may ask. No, not coming from the lips of Jesus. Because in John's gospel account, we experience the depth of the true meaning of the word love. Chapter 13 of John is astonishing. It is part of Jesus's extensive final teaching. And as we just heard, it gives us a precious glimpse of Jesus tenderly and deliberately washing the dirty feet of his bewildered disciples, in itself an extraordinary act of love. We witness a gut-wrenching scene between Jesus and his betrayer. We see Jesus releasing Judas from the circle of disciples. What you are going to do, Jesus says to Judas, do it quickly. An act that in itself reflects the unfathomable depth of Jesus' love for us. For this, Jesus continues his teaching and, if possible, draws us deeper into his love for us. He presents to his disciples, he presents to us this morning, a whole new dimension of the word love. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This passage seems so tender, even fragile, that it defies explanation and exegesis. And yes, it is very, very, very tender. There's nothing fragile about it. There is nothing fragile about the bloody execution that Jesus is now facing. There's nothing fragile about the cross. Because on the cross, Jesus bears not only the sin of the world, but also the weight of glory. God's love of the world. So we begin this solemn and holy day, yes, acknowledging its very real fears and anxieties, but reassured by the immeasurable love of the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Together we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. 
Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Almighty Father, whose most dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it in thankful remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you've made of one blood all the people of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer from our new Book of Common Prayer for trustfulness in times of worry and anxiety. Let us pray. Most loving Father, you will us to give thanks for all things, to dread nothing but the loss of you, and to cast all our care on the one who cares for us. Preserve us from faithless fears and worldly anxieties, and grant that no clouds of this mortal life may hide from us the light of that love which is immortal, and which you have manifested unto us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Say the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all of our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen.
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May that grace be unto you this whole day as you leave this time of worship. Thanks for joining us.